And welcome back, Gamer Nation. We are here for season number two of the Texas State Dynasty. I am super excited. Also got the super cool Texas State hat on. Thank you, Sir James, for that. If you'd like to support the channel, support me, and support everything we're working on, go over to patreon.com slash sksplays. There was my only promo. If you want anything else, it's down in the description. But we are ready to kick it off this year. We're technically in the preseason. We've got a lot of things to do. Um, certain goals that Coach Conquest is wanting to do is we want to make sure that we have our offense going, our running uh, set up. We've still got a lot of our starters from last year coming back. Um, we've also got some new players coming in that's got to fill some holes and take up some uh, roles that, uh, well... We've lost a lot on our defensive side, so that's going to be something to go for. When we look at the recruiting here in a minute, in the future, Coach Conquest wants to move to the 4-2-5, so we're going to have to really booster up that secondary if we want to be part of that. Uh, but with that, let's go in here and look at some of this stuff. We've got a red shirt, some players. We've got a set of depth chart. We've got a lot of things to do. Uh, so the first part of this video, we'll be doing that. Uh, but let's get to it. Let's see how the school's changed. All right, so in the recruiting, the first thing I want to take a look at is how our school has changed from last year to this year. If you can see, a couple of things have moved up and a few things have not changed at all. Coach Prestige is now a B-, minus, so we're moving up in that. So maybe Coach Conquest will get a little bit more respect. I believe that Stadium Atmosphere, Coach Stability, and Academic Prestige have all went up just a tad. We're nowhere near the top, but we're moving up. Uh, conference prestige, championship contender, television exposure, and athletic facilities, still all D pluses. We flatlined on that. We did not move up any. Um, our conference is probably not going to move up any. I mean, with that 83.8 and the top five have 28, we're way off. Championship contender, we are expected to make a big push. We're ranked 90th here in the preseason, it looks like. We're supposed to dip down. We'll try to keep that from happening. But then if you look... We're supposed to shoot up in 2017. We'll hope, hopefully we can exponentially uh, bring that closer. Uh, television exposure goes up during the season. Uh, it will depend on some of the games that we schedule, which I've got your list of suggestions. I will not be able to get them all in there, but a few of them seem really interesting. I've never really understood this one. Increase this grade by having more success on the field. I guess the more games you win, the better your facilities are. Uh, it would have been a great thing for a little RPG element there to build up. Uh, pro potential, program tradition, and campus lifestyle. I think those were all D pluses last year or D minuses, so they may have went up. Uh, I can always go back and check, but I know you all can click real quick. Our program tradition is not going to move up until we get a couple more wins. I mean, theoretically, since becoming Division One, Texas State is sub-500. That's a hard sell. Um, so hopefully we can get above that this year, this season, and I think we will be able to do that. All right, checking on to the team needs. On the offensive side of the ball, we don't need a lot. We need a tight end. Uh, we've got, well, three graduating tight ends this year, so we'll probably need to look for one or two tight ends to uh, fill that role. Uh, I'm also going to have to throw a fullback on there because we've got the walk-on fullback, who I think is 40 overall, so he's not going to be able to block anybody. <clears throat> but for desperation needs... Tied in. And then our kicker, Sands, is going to be moving on. So we'll have to find somebody to replace him. Usually you have somebody who's interested in school. So hopefully we won't have to waste a lot of uh, recruiting points on that. But if you look at some of our grades, our tackles, we've got a big core of tackles coming up, though. They're very young. And our tight ends will be very young once the, the three graduate. So big shoes to fill. On the defensive side of the ball, things are a little different. While last year we recruited our line, that looks amazing. Look at our linebackers, A+. Plus. That's awesome. But And our defensive tackles are C-, minus, and our defensive ends are very young, so we got a, we got a D on that. But even though our secondary is ranked C-, minus, most of them are graduating. We've got five people graduating this year from our secondary. And if I'm going to move to the 4-2-5, we're going to have to replace all of them. So I'm going to have to get two cornerbacks, two free safeties. Technically, the 4-2-5 runs, two cornerbacks, two safeties, strong safeties, and then a free safety. So we'll have to be really careful on how we recruit them and uh, what type we get. And then we're going to have to get a new punter. I think O'Connor is finally leaving us. So 
new faces, but we'll see what we can get this year. I'm kind of excited about jumping into it. I guess the way to look at it is, is we're really changing the guard from last season to this season into next season. It's going to be a whole new team for Coach Conquest. It's his players. Nothing really changed on the pipeline map. I think we actually lost somebody, uh, but we've got Texas and California as our big ones. Oh, I totally forgot you could recruit from Canada. Any Canadian football players, eh? Maybe a kicker from Canada. Hmm. And the only thing I'll show here is you can see I uh, changed the recruiting plan to 425, so it will give us what we need for that. Um, now, the only thing that really changes is your right outside linebacker and your middle linebacker play in the 425. So I will definitely have to go into the position change because I won't be running that a lot this year because we don't have the depth for it. Um, but I will like to try it a little bit to see if it's, you know, conditionally ready for certain uh, plays that the offense may be running against us. But I'll have to go in and put players in manually on certain drives. All right, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to set up the board. And then when I get back, I will let you see who I've targeted uh, the first part of the season. All right, I went through here and set up a somewhat of a really rough sketch of what we want. This year, I've tried to go after players that have an express entrance in Texas State. So maybe we can speed up and get through some players early. But as you can see here, obviously, I've worked on the secondary with these top four picks. Um, I'll roughly go through here. I 100% scouted them. So I'll let you all take a look at those very hastily. I like Jake Hamby a lot. I like his coverage. I won't lie, the strong safety crop that's up there, I even looked at some of the five stars, and I scouted a couple. They're not that good. It's really a bad situation. Uh, Cortez Wilson here is a decent kicker power-wise. But look at his accuracy. That's abysmal. Uh, that may come back and bite us. And the only punter interested in us is Teddy Browning. So maybe at some point, if we free up some points, I'll try to go after um, someone who's got a little bit better of ability. But right now, I'm just going to put them on here so we can have some commits. Uh, I found this fullback that he had us in our top three, um, 69 overall, which is a far cry from 40. Uh, we do need to get at least one wide receiver, so I put Andy Roberson on here, and there's one other wide receiver on down the list. Um, I'll just go on down here. You can see Dylan Lee. I don't know if we'll ever find somebody that can replace Booker, but uh, we'll have to start over since everybody's such a – since our, we have three tight ends that are seniors. Uh, this Terrell Schneider, I know he seems like he's low, but I did like his stats. His speed looked really well on being a free safety. Jeff Willis as well. Some of the players that had higher overalls just didn't seem like they fit what we were trying to make here. Um, but that's just how each crop goes every year. This Dominic Mosby, big, big player. Probably need to move him way up the list. Uh, but we have so many cornerbacks already up there, I believe, that it, yeah, it's going to be one of those things where I don't want to rush up too many people. Um, but, yeah. But this year I'm going to try to have a different method to it. McTaggart, I did like him. His catching is really well and his route running. Uh, but I think it's going to come down to who really is a little bit more interested in us when I start distributing uh, recruiting points. And then there was a couple of offensive linemen that just were really interested in us that I threw them on the list. I didn't want to do anything game. Thank you. Frank Rankin. I like that name. Bill Harris. I think that was the guy off uh, Deadliest Catch. I could be wrong. Uh, there are a couple of athletes down here. I know you can't really see the athlete there on Darren Coe, but uh, I felt like they could play certain positions defensively and offensively that we could have them maybe on both sides of the ball, which I'd like to try that with some of the players this year. We've just, we don't have the talent to do it right now. But so far, that's my 27 that I put on here. Way too many again. I know that. I'm sure that in the comments, you are going to let me know that I need to really work on recruiting. But we'll go from there and we'll see what else happens. But the board is filled out. Uh, we're down to two pipeline states. I did try to, if there was players interested from California and Texas, I really went for them. There was one guy from Kentucky that I really wanted to go after, but 
I just don't think we'll be able to recruit uh, him. Okay, the next step, we need to go in and redshirt players. So I'll go in here, and I know that like our roster is really weird, so I'll just go one at a time, and I'll go through here. Like in this, some people were saying that maybe Brian Jones should be fresh, uh, redshirted freshman, <laughs> freshman him. Uh, I don't know, because Horn is faster than him, but the situation gets tricky when you come over here and you look at their throw power and accuracy. Because <sighs> Horn's going to be a redshirt sophomore. He'll be a junior next year. If we redshirt Brian Jones... Warren would be a junior, Jones would be a freshman, senior, so I don't know. I may come back to this one, but I'll go through here and I'll set all these and I'll come through and I'll show you what I've accomplished and I'll be right back. Okay, done with the red shirting, made the big decision. I cannot wait for comments about this. We are going to red shirt Brian Jones and let him grow over a year. I think that while he does have the throwing power that everybody's going to point out, I mean, he is more accurate than Horn, but I feel like Horn is our guy this year. Horn salvaged our season. We'll let Jones go because I was over here looking and there's something I never noticed over here. It's the importance rating. Jones is not important to us right now. He's not seen the field. So let Horn go. That'll give us a backup in Charles Moore, who's a senior, who's a scrambling uh, senior. Decisions made. Let's go with that, I think. I'm panicking. I don't know. I may flip a coin. Uh, there's no halfbacks to redshirt, though I did go in a little mini panic attack and realize that Tom Sutton is indeed a senior this year. Cortez Brown, there's our 40 overall fullback. He may not even see the field this year. Uh, Denman, Thomas, and McCoy are the three wide receivers that I'm going to redshirt. That gives us Stewart. He's possession. Speed and Robertson, Dixon's balance. Kennery is speed. And then we'll have Austin also out there if we have to go five wide. Though I think I'll put Austin in some because he's shown he can make catches in traffic. Uh, Johnny Walker, I'm going to go ahead and redshirt him this year and let him, since he's got three seniors above him, there's no sense of him wasting a year of eligibility with that. He'll be the starter next year unless we land some massive tight end, but I don't recruit, but I don't think we are. Left tackle, going to leave all those guys in. They're all sophomores. Uh, Foster here, uh, he's got two seniors in front of him. He's not going to see any playing time. Let him redshirt. Same thing with Norton here. Let the 65 overall center redshirt. Uh, Hines, I keep redshirting him, and then I take him off because I'm like, oh, well, Burton's there. But then I'm like, well, Burton needs a backup in case something happens. I know there's a big gap, but we'll let him get there. Two right tackles, going to let him play. The freshman is starting over the sophomore. Left in, I did let the guy from Georgetown, Kentucky, take a red shirt. I did kind of panic about this one uh, because I'm afraid since he is from so far away, we recruited him, brought him in. He's not going to get to play. Uh, he's the quicker player, but when I started looking at some of his other st stats, he really needs a year of growth before he can uh, really get out there and uh, break through and um, get out there. He's just he's below him. Uh, none of the uh, right ends are going to. We got a freshman starting there. I'm, I'm really excited about Darius Fields. He was one of our best recruit routes last year. Same with Jermaine Hughes, defensive tackle starting. Uh, Dawson down here, give him a break. He's got some uh, young guys above him. That'll give him a year of separation. Left outside linebackers, Jensen. He's a senior as well. Saddens me. Humphrey, junior. Uh, give him Manning the break, let him catch up, because we may lose two guys. Humphrey may go pro if he has a great year. Uh, Richard down here, again, a big gap here, just going to let him. There's our transfer, J.D. Carter, filling that right outside linebacker. I've got high hopes for him. Parker and Sanders going to be doing the majority of this Green and Greco, the backups. 
cannot redshirt anybody. Uh, Joseph, free safety. This is the only upperclassman that I'm going to redshirt, and here's what I want you all to think. I was talking about the 425 earlier where you got to have a free safety. Stanley is going to be gone. TJ Newton is going to be gone. That leaves the freshman who has already been redshirted uh, back here. Joseph is not going to see any time. So in the predicament that we need somebody to fill a body in the secondary, I'm going to redshirt Joseph so he can come back next year and we'll have Cameron and Joseph in case something happens. Because I think he'll get playtime next year, but not this year. Uh, safeties, I really thought about doing the same thing with Jacobs because, as I said, the strong safety... I just, I don't know. Jacobs is super fast, but do I want to risk doing another senior for next year? I mean, we're going to have a junior, well, we had a redshirt junior here, but then they'll both be seniors next year and we'll run into the same problem. But he is so much faster than even Booth. I mean, that's... It's probably his coverage that's holding him down. Actually, I can just scroll right over here and see, and that'll be our answer. I'll boost much better at pursuit. Tracking him down. Zone coverage, yeah, he's miles ahead of him. So technically, that might actually be a good idea. Let's do that. Jacobs, I'm going to redshirt. He, that means he'll be like a 70-something overall next year in case something happens. Kicker, Sands, he's a senior. Punter, O'Connor, he's a senior. And that's that. So that's our red shirts. All right, with that being done, it's time to set the depth chart. So let me set this up, and I'll be back, and I'll show you all what it looks like. Oh, man, I made a oopsie. But let's go through here and check this out. And you all probably called me out on this, but I'm, I'm – oh, it's okay. It's not a bad oopsie. All right, Horn is our starting quarterback. We know that. We're good to go on that. Tom Sutton, Darnell Jones doing the bulk of our carries this year. Fullback, we got Brown in there, even though Booker is a better fullback. But I may actually put Booker over there in certain formations to block. But I think the playbook I've designed, I don't – I specifically try not to do anything that has a fullback involved. Stewart, Robinson, Dixon, Kennery, and Austin are our five wide receivers. Booker and Cummings will be our main tight ends. Uh, Perkins, Brown, Tally. Burton, and Jackson is our offensive line. Franklin on the left side of the defense. Fields on the right side. Hughes, Edwards, and Young is our defensive tackles. There's no sense to bring Humphrey up. Jensen is our left outside linebacker. Humphrey, our All-American, is our middle linebacker. And here's where the oopsie comes in. The transfer is not allowed to play. Um... I totally forgot that J.D. Carter, since he's a transfer, he will have to set out a year. I totally, that just slipped my mind. So the senior Daniel Ward is now going to have to jump up and take command. I don't know why I forgot about that. I know that when people transfer, and maybe I just thought because he was coming from a bigger school to a smaller school that it would be okay, but evidently not. But Ward will be there. That's fine. That actually helps out. Um if we do dabble with the uh, 425, because then I'll put Ward down and let some of the other two take the uh, linebacker spots. Uh, Sanders is going to be our number one cornerback. Parker has the better pursuit and press, but Sanders has much better jump and stuff. And I'm really wanting to get some uh, interceptions this year. So that's why I'm going to put him on uh, the main guy. Stanley, our senior impact player free safety, and then our strong safety is going to be Randy Booth, who I believe we position change. On kicks, Sands, Connor Punter, our returns, uh, I put our backup running back, DeAndre Fountain. Uh, I did look at this because I was a little confused. Uh, Robertson, the freshman, is going to get some uh, returns this year, that 92 acceleration and 90 or 89 speed. We do have Sutton down here who's faster, but I just don't want him getting hurt on plays. And I just didn't feel right putting Sanders, who's a defensive player, back there to return. Um, 
I thought about going on down the line and seeing, you know, what having the Jones, but he's 87, 87 or 91 speed, excuse me, but 87 acceleration. So I'll, I'll go with these guys. And the same thing on punt return, Fountain is going to handle that. That's pretty good for having the senior back there with hands. And then Stewart will be his backup. And then everything else is kick on sides and everything. So that's the way our depth chart looks like. So hopefully that's a strong squad for this year. And that will take us to custom schedules. Now I've got the list of things you all wanted, so let's pull it up and see what they have for us first. Uh, C minus. Uh, oh my God, they have Texas A and M on the schedule already. I'm pretty sure somebody asked for that. Um, no, they wanted te Kyle, Kyle and Benson wanted Texas Tech or Baylor. Ugh. Kentucky is on there. I did not I did not mess with these before I changed them. So, okay, good. At the end of the season, we got three conference games, so there's no off time. I can always hit the regenerate schedule thing to see what else it brings cuz this is kind of a basic I don't like I, I why oh, Idaho is in our conference now. That's right. So, Kentucky, Navy, FC East, and Texas A&M are our out of conference games. I'm not a fan of that. Let's uh I'll regenerate it once and uh, see what happens. Use known games, yes. Regenerate schedule. Your out-of-conference games have been rescheduled. An F strength of schedule. But we still end the season. Oh, my God. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in a row. Wyoming, Idaho, Duke. So this is five out-of-conference. No, no. I, I keep forgetting Idaho's in our Sun Belt Conference now. Okay, this is something we can work with. So let me look at this real quick and see what I can come up with. Remember, not everybody who suggested is going to get one, but I'm going to see how we go in. I really don't want to play an FCS West team this year. I really want to play a legit team. And if we have a losing record, then we deserve a losing record. So uh, let me see what I can tinker with here. The back end of the schedule is locked, but weeks – I may do – Week eight is a buy. All right, hot off the presses. Here is the Texas State schedule for this year. I listened to a number of you. There were some people I just couldn't get games on the schedule on any of the open dates. Captain Pete, I'm looking at you. I will say, though, that Penn State is not ranked in this game, which surprised me because I thought that would be one of the ranked ones, but it didn't work out. So we open up the season at home with North Carolina State, an ACC competitor. I think Sean Messer wanted that game. Then we travel to East Lansing, Michigan to take on the number 17 Spartans. Uh, Grimmeth wanted two ranked teams, and I think that Blue posted about Michigan State. I have been to Michigan State's campus before, so this would be interesting. Uh, we got UMass on the schedule, believe it or not. Um, this is kind of probably the worst team on our schedule besides Idaho. Uh, this was requested by Brandon Carrico, I believe. So they accepted that uh they wouldn't that was the only week they would line up so and then we'll journey to boston college so we're going to stay up there in that region uh from teams and take on number 21 boston college uh so that's our second ranked team i thought that would add a little bit of flair to try to travel across the country then we get a bye week then we take on idaho to open up our conference schedule another bye week to kind of regroup see where we're at and then we start the end of what i call the hell conference schedule uh, two games at home, South Alabama and New Mexico State. New Mexico State, I believe, is new to the conference. Or was it just – maybe they were already – no, I think I moved them in. And then uh, Idaho, I know, is not new. We lost Western. Uh, at Georgia State, at Troy, we'll have a revenge game. At, and then we stay in Louisiana two weeks, Lafayette, Amaro, and then finish the season at home against Arkansas State, or Arkansas, as intellectuals will call it. So I think that's a pretty healthy schedule. we got a strength of schedule of a C. Um, I think that this will be well, and it gives us opportunities early on to bring in some invites. And then after these weeks, I mean, we're up to week nine, and we'll have three other chances to get people to come visit. So I think that works out to our uh, uh, benefit. So we'll go with this. All right, let's start season. This may take over a minute to complete. Let's go to the future. I like that this just started out and look at the main thing. This may just be, I'm, this is going to be the, I'm, this year I'm trying to do different thumbnails for the season. And I think that's just going to be the thumbnail. 
Following Tom, Texas State fans know Sutton is their man for 2014. That's perfect. What is this wizardry? Time to make a statement in the polls. So show them your Bobcats are for real. What is going on with our AD? He's in like high spirits for some reason. Here's your preseason top 25. Alabama, OSU, Washington, Texas A&M, the Louisville Cardinals are your top five, followed by Oregon, Texas, Notre Dame, Nebraska, Florida, USC, Georgia, Votek, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, GTEC, Michigan State there, Ole Miss, USC, Florida State, Boston College, Mississippi State, Missouri, K-State, and then Oklahoma State. Oh, it keeps going. We can go on down. I'm sure we're probably... way way at the bottom there's Baylor I know that uh Kylan Benson wanted to schedule them I just couldn't make it work in the schedule but I'll keep a list of who we didn't get to put on the schedule maybe for next year Western Kentucky they switch conferences and they drop there we are we are 90 I, I, I said it earlier we're overall a C offense C defense C and our special teams is B minus till they all graduate interesting Here's the conference outlook for this season. Starting at the bottom, Idaho, South Alabama, Georgia State are the bottom three, which seems to be what it was last year. Uh, well, not last year because Idaho is new. Um, we're in the middle of the pack again, but we're fourth. So we're the top echelon of the middle of the pack. They've got University of Louisiana Monroe. Well, they did come off that bowl win last year. Arkansas State, who got screwed like us, and then Troy is third ranked. Let me check uh, Western. Western is predicted third in their new destination. That's interesting. Here's our preseason All-Americans. Uh, Steve Humphrey, middle linebacker from Texas State, taking on second team royalties. And Tom Sutton being all Sunbelt first team. Also Humphrey as well, being middle linebacker. And look at Russ Parker making it on the all Sunbelt first team Booker, all Sunbelt second team tight end. Jensen, Marcus Jensen, left outside linebacker, second team, all Sunbelt. Stanley, free safety, all Sunbelt. Sands is the all Sunbelt uh, second team kicker. I'm impressed. Wow, somehow Josh Sanders is up here as returner, and he's not even returned once. Well, I guess he returned a little bit last year. We did say he had a little bit better job than... uh. Falks on some of that, so maybe there's something to that. All right, week one is a bye week for us, so I'll go ahead and just knock out the recruiting, and I'll give you an update next week.